I have already said that the last section of the wasteland, what the thunder said, is the most difficult section of the poem. What the thunder said, or much of what the thunder said, was written by T.S. Eliot in Lausanne, the Swiss city on the shores of Lake Geneva, where the poet was recovering from a nervous breakdown, from a psychological breakdown. And the city of Lausanne had been selected as the perfect place to return to mental normalcy by the poet's London psychiatrist. T.S. Eliot claims, perhaps with a stung in his cheek, that he was in a state of trance while writing what the thunder said in Lausanne. And this probably contributed towards making what the thunder said the most difficult section of the wasteland. It has to be conceded that T.S. Eliot has provided the last section of the wasteland, perhaps the greatest section of that great poem, the final section of the wasteland, what the thunder said, with a magnificent opening. The first part of that section comprises nine lines, just nine lines. But using those nine lines, those rather short nine lines, the poet creates a graphic descriptional picture of the events leading to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and also indicates the position of Jesus Christ in the contemporary world, in contemporary society. It must be remembered that the strokes are rapid, the strokes are deft, and as a result, the descriptional picture is more a pencil sketch than a watercolour or an oil painting. We are told of torchlight, sweaty faces, frosty silence, gardens, agony, stony places, shouting, crying, prison, palace, reverberation, thunder of spring over distant mountains. It has to be observed that the wasteland here closely follows the narratives offered by the four canonical gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They tell us of how Jesus was arrested by the temple guards in the garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem and how the guards came with an escort of Roman soldiers how Jesus was taken before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish judicial body, how he had to stand trial before the Sanhedrin, how he was detained there, and how he was taken to Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, and how he was finally crucified on Mount Calvary. 
It is perhaps this crucifixion that is alluded to as of thunder of spring over distant mountains. In fact, Mount Calvary was not very far from Jerusalem. It was quite close, it was just outside Jerusalem. But the poet calls Mount Calvary distant mountains because in today's world, Mount Calvary has traveled very far in metaphorical terms. And it is indeed a distant mountain as far as contemporary society, as far as the contemporary world is concerned. For the society, the world is a society, is a world which has completely forgotten the teachings of Jesus Christ. In John 14, 6, Jesus proclaims, Jesus famously proclaims, I am the way the truth and the life. But today, that Jesus is dead. What shall we do if the ultimate source of all spiritual life itself ceases to exist? He who was living is now dead. We who were living are now dying. Understandably, Naturally, our society is a dying society. Our civilization is a dying civilization. Our world is a dying world. The crucifixion of Jesus did not result in his real death. Because he continued to live after he was crucified. And as he himself said, he was the way, the truth and the life. But today in 1921, today in post-Great War Europe, Jesus is certainly dead. And as a result, we ourselves are dying. The last line of the part, which consists of just four words, a rather short line, with a little Patience baffled me when I read the wasteland for the first time. But now I think I understand it somewhat. I understand the import of the line somewhat. With a little patience. The poet is trying to say that we are patient with ourselves. We have patience not to reach spiritual attainment. But to suffer the consequences of our spiritual death. We have enough patience to pay the price of our spiritual death caused by our decision to abandon the Son of God.